Alright, hey there guys, Eater Takasi here, aka Jedi Bro95. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. In this video is going to be continuing on with my badge tier link ranking series. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to be doing the playmaking badges. So, without further ado, let's get right into the video. And first, let's start off with Ankle Breaker. And I'm going to put this in the B tier. Now, had you, I made this video about a week ago, or a couple of weeks ago actually. I would have said this is like a D tier badge because <laughs> Ankle Breakers were useless. But now, 2K, since they have buffed Ankle Breakers and made it much more um, prevalent and much more um, frequent to get ankle breakers. You know, ankle breaker badge is now one of the better playmaking badges in the game. I personally don't view ankle breakers very highly because that's not why I, you guys know, that's not why I make a playmaking build. But at the same time though, you know, there are a lot of dribble heads out there that do like to break ankles and go for montages. So I definitely would recommend, like, I would definitely put this on the B tier. And if you're one of those guys that just goes for ankle breakers when you're playing as a playmaking build, then you could definitely get away with rocking this on Hall of Fame. Bailout, I'm going to put Bailout in C tier. Um, and the only reason for that is is because I find myself never really needing to use it. Don't get me wrong, it is a good badge, but at the beginning of the year, if you remember correctly, bailout ba bailout passes were so OD that you didn't need the badge at all. I was I remember a time where I was throwing bailout passes left, right, and center this year, uh, beginning of the year, because you didn't need it because it was just so OP with how they were, how frequently they were happening. Uh, and don't get me wrong, it's still a good badge if you have some badge points to spare. Like maybe about 26, 27. You probably could get like, you know, maybe some bronze bailout if you really chose to. But for myself, it's like, I, I don't find myself ever needing it. Because, well, one, I don't use bailout passes. And two, bailout passes are already uh, broken as enough as it is. So why do I need a badge for it? Anyways, moving on, break starter. I'm gonna put in the D tier. Uh, I would recommend, honestly, I w the only time I would recommend you put on this badge is if you have one playmaking badge and you are a big. That is it. Other than that, if you're a guard build like myself, you don't need break starter because you already have high enough pass accuracy or good enough pass accuracy to where you could get away with throwing outlet passes. Uh, down the court and even if you're a guard you shouldn't be throwing outlet passes you should be catching the outlet passes and going for um, the transition basket so honestly that's the only time I'd really recommend you put on break starter uh, dimer I'm putting this in the S tier this is one of the best playmaking badges in the game I would say it is a top two playmaking badge in this game behind something like maybe handles for days but Dimer is just so important being able especially in this game being able to give your teammates a shot percentage boost on catch and shoot situations or even just it with open shots in general giving your opponents giving your teammates extra percentage when it comes to shooting can be the difference between a make and a miss or or differences between wins and losses because I've had games where I literally where Dimer literally saves my teammates and I from f from fucking uh, losing the game because I kick it to the guy because normally when I'm close when I close the game I when I go to a t when I get the ball and I'm looking to close out a game I'm looking to pass the ball most of the time I'm looking to attack the basket because everybody's gonna go crazy and be like okay stop anything don't al just allow just if he drives by you everybody make sure. Like, make sure he passes it out. And that's what I go for, because I know you're going to do that to me. And Dimer is just so clutch when it comes to it. Uh, any guard build, I would say, if you have the ability to get Dimer, you should get Dimer on at least gold. You know, even if you're a non-playmaking build, like, for example, a scoring machine or a slasher build with sharp takeover, you know, any build that can get Dimer, I think you should get it. Yeah, it's just so good. Downhill... I'm going to put this in the B tier. Now, I've seen 2K Labs video on downhill. And it is a, it is much better than it was last year. But I still find myself thinking, like, if I'm already in the high 90s with the speed with the ball, because I'm in, like, a 94 speed with the ball and maybe 95, it, if I already have, like, a very high enough speed with the ball... Why would I need downhill? Especially when I have playmaking takeover, I get a plus 10 speed with the ball boost. So I'm approaching over 100 speed with the ball. So why do I need downhill? That's just a waste of badge upgrades. Now, obviously, if you have like an 83 to an 8, like to a, maybe a low 90s, I could definitely see you putting on downhill on like gold because it is just, it's really good with those 
types of players. But for a build like myself or like an uber athletic guard, I really don't think you'll need this badge. So that's why I'm saying I'm putting in the B tier for um, badge rankings. Now, Dream Shake, this is the worst playmaking badge in the game. No explanation, just put it in the D tier. Next, uh, Flashy Passer. Uh, I have actually experimented with Flashy Passer, and I'm going to put this in the B tier. Now, it is still good. But it just doesn't give you, the passer, as much takeover as the receiver. The receiver gets a lot of takeover. But I find myself not getting as much takeover as I did last year with it. Maybe it's just me, and I've not really noticed it. But when I was playing with it in 3v3 Pro-Am about two weeks ago, uh, I really did notice that I wasn't getting a, as much takeover as I thought I would be getting. Especially considering last year, you throw two, if you had playmaking takeover with Hall of Fame flashy passer, you threw like two flashy passes and you had takeover immediately. But this year, I have, find myself having to throw like three or maybe even four in order to get takeover. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just me and I haven't noticed a, a much of a difference. Or I've noticed, or I just thought that it was... Just crazy last, like, it's crazier than I thought it was last year, and then now this year it's not that great. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but let me know in the comments, guys. Uh, floor General, I'm putting this in the uh, A tier, borderline S tier for a badge, because I feel like this is possibly the most important playmaking badge for your team. Uh, well, not I'd feel like. It's, it's definitely the most important playmaking badge for your team, uh, because... You know, turning basically inconsistent shooters into great shooters is very important. And being able to see your teammates' percentages so you can tell, like, say you're playing with a bunch of randoms, you hop in the game, and you know, you can get a gauge on, like, because, you know, 2K doesn't give you, like, as much of a description on the my player build or the badges and or, like, the pie charts and shit as you would like. Like, you see Slasher on a build for your teammate, and I'm like... And I'm just like, oh boy, okay, um, you might not be able to shoot. And then I pull up in the game, and then it's like, he has like a 53% chance from a corner shot. And I'm like, okay, so you're a floor spacing slasher then. You know, and again, that's part of 2K's build system issues that I just don't understand why they never bothered to correct. Um, but it's really nice to give the percentage as well as being able to see, uh, to give your teammates a boost. So I would definitely, if you are a playmaking build and whatnot, always have this Hall of Fame. Um, obviously, this is a Hall of Fame or bus badge, but I feel like even if you don't put on Dimer, you should definitely have Floor General just to at least see your teammates' percentages. Uh, moving on to Handles for Days, I'm putting this in the S tier as well. Uh, not only, like, I didn't know this until about midway through last year, and I never really talked about it, or at least I don't think I did. Um, Handles for Days basically increases your combo speed. And that I didn't know, but you know, obviously saving stamina on dribble moves is great. Is great being able to pull those combos off for longer. <laughs> I apologize for that, gentlemen. Okay, so being able to pull off your, I'll just start the handles for these over again. All right, moving on to handles for days. I'm going to put this in the S tier. This is, you could make an argument that this is like the best playmaking badge in the game. You know, being able to save stamina and chain your combos a lot quicker, which honestly I didn't know until I actually took the time out to read the, the description of handles for days. And then I was like, well, shit, sign me up. <laughs> what handles for days is amazing. You know, keeping stamina is always so important in, in a game like this, especially when stamina is cruised. Uh, without Gatorade, as well as being able to just chain combos for longer and keep the ball in your hands to pull off crazy montages is pretty sweet. So I definitely would recommend you always have handles for days on like a minimum of gold if you can only get it to gold. But definitely push the Hall of Fame if you have the ability to do so. Lob City Passer, I'm putting this in the C tier. Uh, most of the time I find myself in a situation to where I'm not throwing heavy traffic lobs or just throwing lobs in general and even then like the badge really doesn't serve a whole lot of purpose because lobs are already broken anyways as I talked about with lob city finisher in the finishing badge one uh, if you're already like basically a great passer 
you don't necessarily need Lob City Finisher. Like, if you want to put Lob City Finisher like, Passer on, I mean, if you want to put it on, like, and you have, like, 27 playmaking badges, like, after you get, like, say, Hall of Fame Unpluckable, and then, like, you know, Flashy Passer, or, like, maybe just have, like, Gold, ha you know, like, if you have a lot of playmaking badges, sure, I could see you rocking it, but to me, I just, I really don't find myself needing it. Now, next badge is going to be Needle Threader, and I'm going to put this in the A tier. Um, you know, I saw I saw Laker fan on his video put this badge in the B tier, and I couldn't disagree more. Yeah, sure, passing lane steals may be, more bro may be less effective than they were last year, which, thank God for that, because, oh my God, passing lane steals made me want to cry when I play competitive Pro-Am. But Needle Threader is just, it's so great, guys. Like, throwing passes down the court, getting them through people that are coming off screens or, like, flare cuts around screens. Because I do that a lot of times when we're playing zone. Uh, I do I do get try to, see, try to say to my bigs, okay, set a back screen for the guy in the corner or whatnot, and I'll throw a pass to him. And the, the, his matchup can't get around the screen. He, the scr the um, zone player can't get around the screen. And even if a guy comes over, it's just a quick extra pass around. But being able to throw passes around screens or into traffic or throw nice little crisp bounce passes down the floor for um, assists, you know, Needle Threader is just, it's amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, I really think every pass, every great passer in this game should have this badge on a minimum of gold because it's just so great. Pass Fake Maestro, just like Dream Shake, it is probably the worst playmaking badge in the game. Uh, there's no need for it, so D tier. Next. Post spin technician. It's funny to me. Um, I just I'm gonna put this at the C tier, uh, mainly because honestly, there's worse playmaking badges as I talked about with pass fake maestro and dream shake. But post spin technician, like I know it's good and it's good for the post scoring builds. But uh, the, the thing I always I'm just wondering is like this is just a bit of a side note. Why is post scoring not its own pie chart? I never understood that. Why is post scoring not its own section on the pie chart customization? You know, put badges like post spin technician, fucking dream shake, um, back down punisher, deep hooks, drop stepper, deep fades, um, you know, all those badges. Like, put them in their own fucking category and let people use that for their own section, like their own for their upgrades. I don't understand why it, they have to spread it out, but anyways, post pick technician, I would put this at C, borderline D tier. You don't need this badge at all. Quick first step, this is a clear S tier badge. Uh, like, a lot of ISO players or a lot of just playmakers, including myself, uh, just absolutely have to have this badge on Hall of Fame. It is just amazing to be able to get the, the quickest step possible to um, get by your defenders and collapse the defense or get by your defender and then fake them another way and get open for a jump shot it's just it is so good i really do think every playmaker should have this badge on at least hall of fame and and uh, minimum and maximum hall of fame you, you have to have this hall of fame uh space creator i'm going to put this in the c tier uh the only reason i'm saying c is because i was in a my court with a, one of my buddies and we were doing a personal workout together and he was using space creator and it wasn't working like he I, he couldn't snap he could he, he had no shot creating takeover but you know I he couldn't you know step back and make me stumble forward he couldn't you know make me stutter a little bit every time he did a step back like it just to me it doesn't make sense it, I don't know like a space creator doesn't work anymore or if it's just you know has to work on like Hall of Fame. I don't know, but Space Creator is not great, and I would put that in the C tier. Stop and go. I'm also putting in the C tier just because it's a badge that you don't need. Uh, it's not worse than Pass Fake Maestro and Dream Shake, but it's definitely bad. Like you don't need Stop and Go this year or ever. So just moving on. Tight handles. I'm gonna put this in the B tier actually. Tight handles took a big hit from 2K19. To a 2K20, I mean, to 2K21, which is good because, you know, tight handles was really broken last year. But at the same time, though, it's not terrible. Like, you could definitely use it if you had badge points to do so. But I personally find myself not needing it as I don't need to stun my defender when sizing them up in order to get by them because I feel like I can get by my man no problem anytime I want. 
And lastly, Unpluckable. This is funny, but I'm actually going to put Unpluckable in the A tier. Unpluckable this year is a very good badge, especially when you have playmaking boost to to keep, to keep the ball under your control more. Uh, but play make but unpluckable this year. It's saw it's very good. Uh, it was definitely buffed from last year I could I could confirm that right now, you know Doesn't work with the bump steals, you know It doesn't eliminate the bump steal potential, but it does knock it down a quite a decent amount I have noticed now it's gonna be funny cuz as I say that uh, I'm gonna get into a park game with some guy with some of my friends Sometime this weekend and I'm gonna get bump stolen by like four different people in like ten games, so I don't know, that's just how it is for me. Like, I talk good about shit, and then it all of a sudden goes sideways. But, as it stands for me right now, Unpluckable is, you know, a very good badge. I only have it on gold, just because I think Hall of Fame Handles for Days is obviously better. Uh, same with Quick First Step and uh, Dimer. But, Unpluckable is just a necessary badge for dribble guys, for dribblers. Or even playmakers in general. So, with that being said, that is going to be my playmaking badge here. Once again, here are the letters on the screen. Uh, let me know in the comment section below, gentlemen, if you do agree or disagree with anything I have said. Uh, comment your thoughts and um, uh, things that you want to see, I mean, for next video. Like if you guys did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new. You're new. And with that, I'm out.